Hello everyone, how's it going? My name is Dan the Tutor, on a mission to become the world's greatest tutor. In today's video, we're going to be talking about some shortcuts for Taylor series. So in other videos, I talk about the basics of Taylor series, I talk about the formula, and how to write your own Taylor series. But now we're going to talk about some of the shortcuts, because most of the time on the test, we actually don't even use that long, complicated formula. Instead, the questions on the test normally look something like this. Let's say I give you the Taylor series or the Maclaurin series for sine x, which is x minus x cubed over 3 factorial plus x to the fifth over 5 factorial minus dot dot dot. Or maybe they even give it to you in the series formation from n equals 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the n times x to the 2n plus 1 over 2n plus 1 quantity factorial. They might give you something like this, and then they ask you to write the Taylor series for sine of 3x just using the fact that you know sine x here. And so it's actually very simple. All you got to do is, wherever you see an x, you just literally replace it with 3x. So watch this, 3x minus quantity 3x cubed over 3 factorial plus 3x to the fifth over 5 factorial minus dot dot dot. You get the picture. You can reduce this if you want. I'm not going to in this video. That's not the point. The point is just showing you the shortcuts and the patterns. Even if I wanted to do it for the series formation, look at the series above. And again, I'm just going to replace a 3x wherever I see an x. Not an n, an x. And so in other words, I basically am going to get this answer and there we go that's how we write the taylor series for this one and so as you can imagine if i wanted the sine of 10x minus 2 or something crazy it would literally be as simple as replacing the 3x with 10x minus 2 to the 2n plus 1 over 2n plus 1 factorial so that's that shortcut rule works for any of the Taylor series, by the way, can be cosine x, can be e to the x, can be the natural log of 1 plus x, any of those, these shortcut rules will work. But let's talk about another shortcut rule. What if I have 4x times sine of x? So in other words, it's the same sine x from the beginning, but I'm multiplying a 4x out in front. Well, let me tell you what it looks like. First of all, let me just quick rewrite the first couple terms here for sine. And then I'm putting this in parentheses and putting a 4x in front. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to distribute the 4x to all of these terms. And I know I missed the plus dot dot dot. Don't bug me about that. It doesn't matter. The point is just showing you the shortcut rules. So this will simplify to 4x squared minus 4x to the fourth over 3 factorial plus 4x to the sixth over 5 factorial. And if you don't see what I did, remember I just multiplied every one of these terms in parentheses by 4x, and that's how I get this, and fine, I'll put the dot dot dot, doesn't matter. And in case you're wondering what this looks like for the series notation, well first let me again just write it in the original form, negative 1 to the n, x to the 2n plus 1, over 2n plus 1 factorial, and now with the 4x out in front. Now watch what I'm going to do. I'm actually going to simplify this by putting the 4 inside the series. I'll just put it in front like that. It's just a coefficient. And then for the x, this x can be combined with this other x in the numerator because this is x to the first. Properties of exponents says that I can write it like x to the 2n plus 2. And if you're not familiar with that rule, well, it's basically a rule from Algebra 2. So now you know. And then the denominator stays the same. And this is our series. And therefore, the answer. And so now we're going to look at another shortcut rule. This one's going to be using the derivative or the integral. So first, I give you the Taylor series or Maclaurin series for natural log of 1 plus x. You can either have this memorized, or maybe they give it to you, depends on the class. Regardless, it looks like this. And then I ask you, using this known series, 
Can you find the Taylor series for 1 over 1 plus x? And the secret to this one is, it's a derivative rule. What do I mean? If you take the derivative of natural log of 1 plus x, hopefully you know this, the derivative is 1 over 1 plus x. So in other words, if you now take the derivative of this series, then we can actually have the series in one step without doing any complicated math. But how do I take the derivative of this? Well, remember, n is just a coefficient, really doesn't matter. The only thing that matters is the x, and this is a power rule, because it's x to the n. So the power rule tells us the derivative is going to be, first, write the coefficient out in front, then I bring the n down from the exponent, and it's n minus one, still divided by n. As you can see, these n's end up canceling, and so therefore the final answer for this series is n equals 1 to infinity of negative 1 to the n minus 1 times x to the n minus 1 and there's my series and the cool thing is this also works in reverse where let's say instead I give you this series which we know because we literally just did it and now we're doing it in reverse so now I want natural log of 1 plus x and it wouldn't make any sense for me to ask this problem if we just did the last one because we know this answer already. But I'm saying if this is a completely new question and we didn't see the one before it, how would I answer this? Well, I would recognize that this integral of one over one plus x is the natural log of one plus x. Technically, there's some absolute value in there because of the rules of integration. But let's just not worry about that for now because it doesn't matter and it will never matter. But how would I take the integral now of this series? Well, n equals 1 to infinity. The integral rules state that if this is a power rule, which it is, then I add 1 to my exponent. So n minus 1 plus 1 is just n. And then I have to divide by my new exponent, which is n. And you'll see this is the exact same answer we had before. So that's another nice trick we use. If you know the series, we can take the integral or the derivative to find another series. And then the last shortcut rule I want to talk about is if you ever have a function in the form f of x equals a over 1 minus r. Now this is very similar to power series actually, but basically what we learned from power series and at the end of the day geometric series is that this is the same as the sum of a geometric series. And we know geometric series can be written in one of two ways. This is one way or this is the other way, a times r to the n minus one. Hopefully this is sounding familiar. Personally, I like the left one better, so that's the one I'm gonna be using today. But what this means is that if I have a function, let's say f of x equals one over one minus x, and we want a Maclaurin series of this, I'll admit Taylor series are more complicated, especially if you're centered around a different point other than zero. Like let's say we're centered around one or two or whatever then yeah, we'll probably have to take the derivative four times and build the formula the old fashioned way for Taylor series. But assuming it's a Maclaurin series centered at zero, which it will tell us in the problem or something, then I can just say here, a is one and r is x. So therefore the Taylor series is n equals zero to infinity of one times x to the n. Or honestly, you can just write this as x to the n, you don't need the times one, and there's your answer. Or if they wanted, let's say, the third degree Taylor polynomial, then I would start by plugging in n equals zero, so x to the zero plus x to the first plus x squared plus x cubed, and I would stop at x cubed, because that's what you do for a third degree Taylor polynomial, and x to the zero is really just one. So this would be my answer for the third degree Taylor polynomial. Hopefully that makes sense, because then we'll just do one more, and I think we'll be good. If I have the function f of x equals 2 over 3 minus 4x squared, and again I want to do the same thing, I want to turn this into a Taylor series or a Maclaurin series centered at zero. Using those shortcuts, what would I do? So the first thing you need to recognize, this is not in the form that I want, a over 1 minus r, specifically because the 1 is there. So I need to get rid of that three and turn it into a one. The way I do that is I factor out a three in the denominator, 
leaving me with 1 minus, watch what I do here, 4x squared over 3. Very important that it's divided by 3 in order for the math to work out. That 3 right here can actually be written in the numerator like this, 2 thirds over 1 minus 4x squared over 3. And the reason why it's so important that I did that is because we know a is 2 thirds and we know r now is 4x squared over 3. And let's just say hypothetically this was plus instead, then fine, this would be negative 4x squared over 3. See what I did? I'm going to erase that because that was not the original problem, but I think you get the point. And so then now if I want to write this as my Taylor series, n equals 0 to infinity of a, which is 2 thirds, times r, which is the 4x squared over 3, to the nth power, and there's my series. Or if I want to do the same thing, I want the third degree Taylor polynomial, then this is what I would do. I would start by plugging in n equals 0, which would be 2 thirds times 1, because anything to the 0 power is 1, plus 2 thirds times 4x squared over 3 to the first power, which isn't necessary because it's just to the first power. And I can reduce this later, but just writing it out for now. And then plus the next one is 2 thirds times 4x squared over 3 quantity squared. But that one doesn't count. Why not? Because if I square this, it's going to be 16x to the fourth over 9. The x to the fourth means you're outside of the third degree Taylor polynomial. So that last one is disqualified, meaning my final answer is just the first two terms. Or if I reduce that, it's just 2 thirds plus what? That's 8x squared over 9. And there you go. That's how you do this. And that's a ton of shortcut rules that you can use to make you have a much easier time with Taylor and Maclaurin series. So definitely keep on practicing those so you're ready for the test and you should be all good with that. So I hope you have a great rest of your day and I'll see you in the next video. Take care and bye-bye.